Thank you for the interest in the compost heap. Um, in Germany, we call this compost heap biomiler. And um, maybe I got mixed up with it once in a while, so uh, you know what I'm talking about. Then we're starting the uh, web seminar for the biomiler, the compost heap. And we have two big views uh, into this matter. One is that a lot of people are looking for building up humus, the soil recovery and building um, better soils. Other people are looking into the compost heap as a heating uh, device. And the heating device itself is a substitution of fossil heat. And it gives us a big advantage that we have a heat source without any, um, any fire station. No, if any, yeah, fire. Um, the entire uh, view of the biomiler or of the system itself is um, from the ecological, ecological side that we use original um, sustain, sustainable materials. We support our own regional farming material and we also support our regional soil recovery. Uh, also, the fruit and the vegetable um, farming and harvesting uh, by using the uh, humus and the compost is uh, much better than any fertilizer which is artificial. Even more, uh, we are looking into our uh, regional economy, which gives us the advantage to use regional workforce as well. And one big advantage is that we have a decentralized energy source and um, an independent from our local utility provider. The 360 degree practice for the material is using green cut into wood chips, getting the energy out of it by the compost heap and um, using the compost and humus including the microbial uh, carbonization, which is a very advanced part uh, recovering our soil. And all these things together is leading us to the inventor of the system, which is John Pan in the early 70s. He was looking how to survive in his uh, Mediterranean environment and with a very stony ground, so he had no soil really available. And he was uh, asking himself how he could use all the bushes and uh, wood material he had to cut out of the forest. So uh, he got into the business of another kind of garden, which I always say is a garden for the people not want to put too much work into it. Um, if you have any questions down the road, I'm going through the slides please post them into the chat box um, and I will answer it straight away since we are just a few people on this meeting. Um, we can handle it as the questions are coming from your side. Uh, there are two ways to use a compost heap. The one way is uh, to get the heat into a central heating system. Most likely the heating systems in Europe are on a hydraulic basis. In the States, um, I know that there are a lot of air-based uh, heating systems, um, which are a combination of heating and air conditioning systems. In Europe, we also have the opportunity to build into the biomiler, as you see in the middle of the picture, the white tank. Um, to harvest a methane gas, a biogas, uh, to use for a small uh, biogas generator, methane gas generator, or for cooking uh, purposes. But that is kind of uh, not easy, especially in Europe, uh, since we have a lot of technical appliances and uh, a lot of technical issues from the governmental side uh, to look at and uh, not getting into insurance problems or 
any kind of technical issues. So uh, using the gas is one thing, getting this gas allowed uh, for use is another one, which in some regions is not that easy. Uh, in the moment, we have two different ways to uh, use our waste. One is a classic one from John Pan, uh, which is a compost heap built from fresh wood and cut up to 10, uh, 10 centimeter in diameter, which is all the green cut from the uh, branches. Uh, this going together with water is the ideal mixture uh, to generate the heat. The other way is to use a lot of dung, horse manure, and slurry together with uh, wood and lignin content material, which most of the time is the wood, uh, or some wheat straw and uh, some other cuts from, from the um, farmland environment. Uh, just one question for you. Um, are you looking at the uh, biomiler, the compost heap, for heating purposes or for compost and fertilizing uh, reasons? Can you just give me a short uh, message in this chat box? Oh, for both. Good. Um, I just wanted uh, to make sure that I'm not bothering you with the two um, ways going through the uh, you want to uh, heat a greenhouse through the winter time. Yeah, that's a perfect uh, solution since the biomiler, um, especially if it's done with dung, horse manure, and slurry, um, would then be in a farmland environment where uh, for the first few or three days um, the smell wouldn't uh, cause any problems. Okay, and you use the compost later for your greenhouse planting. Yeah, perfect, um, per perfect usage. Um, the two ways uh, to set up the biomiler have in common that it's all low tech. So it's really nothing else than a pump, the pipe, and um, the green cut material. You don't need a burn chamber, you don't have any mechanical work to do. There is no way um, you have to turn around your uh, compost uh, pile. Uh, it's all set up at one time. You don't take care of it over the time. And at the end, um, you have uh, compost and humus, as well as you have the heat for your uh, greenhouse. The biochemical process is against any classical um, view, not only aerobic, it's also anaerobic. The heat, um, which normally is turned around with a compost uh, turner twice a week or even more often, uh, is in this particular way not necessary, since all the material within its small um, environment within the compost heap itself, it's aerobic and anaerobic. There's also gas phases that the material goes through, and uh, this phases um, work pretty well with all the material. The bacteria and the enzymes processing and digesting all the material and um, split it up into their atomic structure. So if you have H2O, for water, you will have after the process H and two times O. And the enzymes from the root work from the plant will later tell the humus built uh, soil, I need water available now, and also I need a certain quantity of water. So the enzymes from the roots from the plant will send a message into the humus soil give me that and that much milliliter of uh, water. And then the enzymes are building out of the H and 2 O's in the ground, the H 2 O, the water, the plant at that certain time needs. That's the reason that the unit is that um, beneficial uh, in itself for the soil. 
the full penetration of the human building bacteria and enzymes throughout the compost heap takes place within eight weeks. After eight weeks, you already have the entire structure you need for your um, plants. And within eight months, the same pile build up a carbonized uh, structure, uh, which looks a little bit like coal. Uh, so it's a very black, consistent material, um, which takes and carries all the human, um, the human uh, bacteria uh, structure. So it's carbonized already after eight months. Um, actually, you have two ways to set up <clears throat> uh, the biomiler or the compost heap. If you only want to have a lot of compost for the plant, you set it up for eight weeks only. And then you don't have any heat exchange system within it. If you set it up mm, for the heating system, um, then we call it biomiler because we put into it um, the heat exchange pipe. And that will then last at least 12 to 15 months. For that reason, um, you will have the carbonized structure at the end and uh, you have two ways to do it. If you only go for the uh, compost and humor, you do it for eight weeks only. If you go for the heat, then you set it up for 12 to 18 months. Um, there's a very unique um, explanation of what humor is about. And uh, this is all done by this Mr. Walter Wittel, who is the uh, inventor of the system um, for the humus building material and the micro uh, carbonization. He says that humus is a dark material which totally lost its former structure. So whatever it was before, it's not there anymore. The humus material is built of a viable biochemical structure. Humic and humine are dry and fluid present. So within the biomiler, if you uh, tear it down, you will find um, uh, solid structure as well as fluid structure, which is all um, human. It always a full saturated substance and non-flammable combustible. So if you have a certain compost in front of you, which you still can burn uh, with fire, then it's only compost and it's not humus. The humus is able to ascend and descend through the soil as well as spread in any direction. And uh, that shows that humus is fully plant available. And that is one of the major things we try to achieve by setting up this compost pile. Um, there is one uh, very nice testing that the Witter always shows in his presentation. It is a glass cube testing system. He has long glass tubes of almost two meters and 70 centimeters in diameter. 70 centimeters is almost uh, two feet. So it's two feet in diameter and it's uh, about eight feet long. And if you put on the top of a, a normal white uh, tent uh, soil, um, black soil, some compost and some humus after his methodology, and you rain it uh, daily with a few milliliters of water, you can see how the humus uh, built by Mr. Wittes is descending down um, through the material in the glass tube. And uh, that proves uh, what he has to say about the humus. Uh, at this picture, you see from the inventor of the entire thing, uh, Jean Pain, how he set up on a stony and very um, unreliable uh, ground, his uh, new garden. And he just put a few planks of wood around it, uh, spread out the compost he earned from the previous year, and is planting into it quite easily. And uh, this environmental system only needs little watering, even if they have um, 40 degrees Celsius, which is, I think, quite a bit of, uh, above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, in this um, environment at the Mediterranean Sea, 
which is quite hot and dry, uh, he's still able to harvest a lot of fruits and veggies. Uh, it's really the system for the uh, people not try, uh, like to work in a garden that much. Here he shows the two different ways um, to use the heat. Uh, on the left hand side, up and uh, lower picture is the hydraulic uh, heating system on the top harvesting the heat, on the bottom using a radiator um, to bring the heat into a room. On the right hand side, the system is based on an uh, air heating system. So you put a very simple pipe construction into the compost heap. But this kind of construction needs the heat to be very close to the building to be heated. Um, since a big pipe can't be isolated uh, from the cold weather that much. Uh, please drop me any question if you have any by the, um, by the message box. Otherwise, I just go and follow the slide. On this picture, you see um, that he had to uh, dig out the big tank. Um, or which system we suggest for the greenhouse is a question. Um, I would suggest uh, the water system, uh, the hydraulic system, since um, you have the best chance to transport the heat in any direction you want. So you either can put the pipes um, into the soil so that you have a root heating system for the plant. Uh, then you would use the same pipe system we use as a heat exchange pipe within the compost pile. Or if you like, you also can um, use the air system. But uh, if you're using the air system and put in pipes which uh, will transport enough heat from the compost heap into the greenhouse, you also have a lot of moisture coming uh, through the system. And uh, that is a question if the greenhouse can use that moisture coming out of the flow from the uh, pipe system within the compost heap. Uh, if you go for airflow system, um, if you use the air pipe system into the compost heap, you definitely need a, need a strong blower. Otherwise, you don't get um, the quantity of heat out of the compost pile. The reason we did a compost pile with 300 meters, um, 100 centimeter in diameter, which is about seven inch diameter pipe, and had a bit of problem to find the right ventilation system to bring all the heat uh, into the room. So out of my opinion, I would stay on a hydraulic system by pipes and water. OK, here in this picture on the slide 14, uh, we're seeing his tank system, which was um, generating biogas. And uh, he had to dig it out since the slurry was used up after three months. And the rest of the compost heap was still working. And he had no filling or um, emptying system built into this, which we do these days. Uh, on the right hand side, um, you see truck, um, uh, truck rubber, uh, and uh, this is where he is harvesting his uh, biogas. It's a little bit adventurous. Uh, these days, you can do it as well in plastic bags, and in China, um, they do it as well. But in Germany, it's a bit out of technical range, so nobody really would do that. Since the gas uh, you're harvesting from the slurry uh, is still very exclusive, uh, something might go wrong. In this picture, you can see that he used a little air pressure system uh, to get through the blue pipe, uh, the gas from the bottom, um, from the truck uh, rubber. And he compresses it into the gas box on the, box, uh, on the top of the car. And uh, you see also between the headlights 
the white um, pipe which uh, sends the gas to the carburetor to run the car. And if you have the opportunity to look into YouTube, you will find a small video trailer from the 70s where you can see this car running. And it's quite a bit uh, of fun to see how you operated the car at that time. Uh, I'm now going over into a gallery of different uh, compost heaps. This is one of the very smallest compost heaps we built in 2011. And we use this kind of plastic bag um, to uh, have the material uh, in, in the way stored that we can transport it through small doors or bring it to the backyard of any kind of house. But as I understood, this is not really an issue for you because you are in the farming environment where you have free access to your greenhouse. So this is then only for information purposes. And uh, we later started to use these kind of plastic sacks to cover the heat um, exchange pipe uh, for an easier uh, destruction of the, of the compost heap. That makes it easier if you rebuild uh, the compost heap to get uh, the, the heat exchange pipes um, out of the pile. Uh, this is one of the classic buildings of a compost heap. It looks a bit like a sugar dropping uh, on the table, so it's just a, a pile, uh, no surroundings, no nothing. It piles up as it comes. Um, fixed in are the heat exchanger, uh, and the heat exchanger on the top gets smaller and smaller since the pile gets narrower and narrower. Um, the disadvantage of this pile is um, you lose about 30% of material on the same ground um, diameter. Uh, if you would have done this, as you see later on the slide, uh, with the TEN system, uh, then you would have 30% more uh, heating material on the same spot. In the middle down, you see a picture where we put in the uh, water tank uh, to heat the water, since we are using here the water from the um, local grid to heat the shower uh, system of a sports club, where we have uh, at the weekend 70 to 80 soccer players taking a shower after the tournament. So uh, that is the usage of uh, hot water for shower environment rather than central heating. At this picture, we uh, introduced the tent system um, to have more material at the same uh, base basis. Um, the soil we put in the middle and at the ground is the soil you also use for garden ponds uh, to protect the groundwater for environmental damages by the um, by the concentration of uh, skin um, bacteria uh, so that we prevent the groundwater with too much bacteria from the wood going into the ground directly to the groundwater system. Uh, so uh, we also need all the bacteria to be put back on the green cuts during the building uh, since we need the bacteria for composting rather than leaving them to the ground. At this particular place, uh, uh, maintenance company for buildings are washing all their uh, towels and, um, and clothes that they use to wipe the floors. Uh, they have about five washing mach machines three times a day running with hot water to get all their uh, things clean, the, the uh, towels and things. And they have a big advantage in saving huge amounts of uh, heating money for the washing machine. Um, your question is, 
on the slide before, the previous, there was no fence built around. That's right. So this is a pile just uh, as it comes. And the next slide, number 18, we see the build up uh, for the compost heap with the fence system. The compost heap will heat about 12 to 16 months. And uh, the heat is available in this time in three major uh, arrangements. Um, bear me, I only have in mind the Celsius um, degrees. I don't know the comparison to Fahrenheit. Uh, I might later have to, sh to look it up. So there are about six months you have the degrees from um, 55 degrees to 48 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, Celsius. Then you have about six months where you can harvest out of the compost heap about 45 degrees to 38 degrees. And then you have a running out period of six months where you have um, roughly 40 degrees to 30 degrees um, uh, of the water from the ground normally comes if you uh, go for the local grid for uh, water for the um, shower and the kitchen is about 10 degrees. So um, we may have to look what is it in the Fahrenheit. Okay, uh, this entire um, compost heap we built up by this plastic sack. It was a compost heap which was put into a little uh, backyard uh, environment, a little garage kind of thing. And um, the entire thing was built by a thousand of these uh, bags and set up within seven hours of work. So that was a very fast uh, build up of this compost heap. So another question from your side is, Um, what would be the best time to build up the compost heap to get the most out for the winter time? Actually, there is no wrong time. It really depends on the material available. Since you need about uh, 120 square meter, uh, cubic meters, which is, um, oh my goodness, me, uh, the the cubic meter is three feet volume. So if you have a volume of three feet, three feet, three feet, that would be one cubic meter. And that's 120 times, then it's um, about 400 uh, cubic feet of material which you need. So uh, in Europe, mostly, um, we have one time in October, November, there are a lot of people cutting out the gardening environment and get all the bushes and green cuts available. And then we have a second period, which is in January, February, where a lot of the uh, local roads and the side bushes and um, side trees are cut. So the most material available in our environment here in Europe uh, is October to November and January and February. Um, if you are in a farmer environment, you most likely have um, machine, uh, me mechanical help available. So you have some trucks with a big shovel in front. And for that reason, the work you have to put into the compost heap is not that much. And uh, for the reason that the system will run about 12 to 16 months, you easily able to cover two um, heating periods. So two winter times, you will um, be able to uh, harvest the heat from the compost uh, pile. Hope that answers your question. So if you build it up in October, most likely you will have it for the next two heating periods.
Yes, um, definitely you can calculate your best setup time for the compost heap. Um, this particular compost heap was set up at a hotel and restaurant. These guys are using about uh, 1,200 liters to 1,500 liters hot water every day. They have 11 um, hotel rooms with shower. Um, they have uh, two big washing machines for the entire uh, clothes and dish table clothes and, and uh, towels from the hotel and restaurant. And they have the dishwashing machines and all the hot water they use for cleaning um, the building. And uh, they are running <clears throat> this big uh, pile uh, already um, 10 months by now. And uh, they save about uh, 400 US dollar monthly energy cost uh, for hot water. So then it makes a big difference uh, since they almost use no gas from the uh, utility company. Uh, at this particular place, um, we supposed to get the water we need for the compost heap from the um, fire extension system. But uh, the time when we wanted to have the water, they figured out uh, that the ground pump uh, wouldn't work. So to them, it was a big alarm signal um, that they couldn't fight any fire with the damaged pump. And luckily, us, since this was an exhibition, um, we could uh, manage to get the local fire brigade to help us out with a big tank truck. And these guys pumped uh, 9,000 liters of uh, water into the green cat we set up for this particular exhibition. And uh, are concerned about size and managing harvesting the compost at the end of the site. Site is your question now. And um, you can see that um, the, uh, the first green cut material from about 120 square meters uh, sorry, from 120 cubic meters goes down to, let's say, 80 to 90 uh, cubic meter of uh, compost, uh, which means you have a loss due to uh, moisture and material of about 30%. So whatever in uh, volume square feet you put into it, 30% less you will have for compost and humus. Um, this uh, smaller version of the compost heap is the smallest one we have seen. This is almost um, eight feet by um, by six feet, and it's heating the garden shower system of this house. And as you can see, we have quite a bit of uh, temperature in this. I think it must be 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And it can easily be used um, for a summer period uh, at the garden, a showering system for the pool side, or for any kind of cleaning purposes for the hot water. So whatever material is available, you put it together into a pile, put some uh, pipes in the middle of it, and here you go. Nothing much to look at, uh, nothing to look after. This little tiny thing will work for at least six to nine months. The only disadvantage is it wouldn't work at minus 20 degrees outside uh, since the entire material is not enough uh, to build any uh, isolation to the outside. Um, this is a methane tank. Uh, which we uh, which we are able to put in the to the middle of the compost heap, and the slurry inside will provide us with gas uh, to be used for cooking or for a little gas generator. Um, it's um, easily to put in place, but as said earlier, um, the storage of the gas is uh, maybe not that easy at all. Um, you would harvest about two to four cubic meters of gas every day, which is enough for two warm meals to cook. 
on a two flame burner, or which uh, might give you about um, uh, three hours running time on a little generator of uh, one kilowatt uh, energy electricity usage. This um, kind of sense system we are using can be uh, built up in any kind and any number of um, angles. Uh, yes, uh, I'm looking now into the chat box. You're right, uh, the methane safety is a concern. Um, uh, the methane gas has only one advantage. It's uh, really going very fast from the ground and evaporating into the air. The disadvantage is the ozone um, uh, system, uh, methane gas is really an ozone killer. So at no time and at no way it should be um, evaporated into the air unused or unburned. So for that reason, it may be an interesting system, but not that easy to handle. Um, coming back to the slide here, which shows us um, the opportunity how to build up the compost heap if you're using tent uh, elements to set up whatever kind of uh, right uh, uh, angle system you want to do is possible. Um, it gives this entire system a good looking outside if it's uh, at the exposed position where neighbors or customers of your farm environment have a look at it. If it's at a corner where nobody really takes care about it and you set it up as it is, or you put some uh, normal uh, iron uh, system in place, which you normally use uh, for building and construction sites. There you have these iron mats, um, which are very cheap to get and easy to handle. Uh, at the same system. Uh, you could build the biomiler, the compost heap within a greenhouse, and the methane gas uh, system, I think, should be used outside. So if you then better have an opportunity to set up the uh, compost heap outside of a greenhouse, and building the methane gas uh, would be easier in use rather than having the methane gas within the greenhouse and uh, maybe causing some problems. <clears throat> so, yeah, the, if, you, if the compost heat is outside of the greenhouse, then the methane um, harvesting system wouldn't matter at all you definitely can give it a try. And it's easy to build up. I can provide you some more details for this um, besides this presentation. It was just uh, mentioned to give you an, uh, an idea. In this picture, you will see um, the steps to build up the compost heap covered by the fence system. On the left-hand side, you see the young man crawling on the ground, he is preparing the a hole for the uh, mud um, tank. Because if you're watering the system, um, then building up, you would have a lot of water coming out of it, which you should uh, put into this tank, which is on the left side down picture, uh, able to see. There you put, the flurry, uh, put a slurry pump inside to have the rework of the um, water, because all this water contains bacteria we need for the composting. So on the one hand side, you have to water the entire system with fresh water. At the same time, we repump the slurry water from the compost heap uh, by filling it into this mud uh, tank in the ground and with a slurry pump pumping it up. On the right hand above picture, um, you see next to the guy with a red t shirt far away, uh, the tent system overlapping the tank and the ground by one third. So, what we did is we put the tent 
covering one third of the tank in the ground, um, uh, the barrel in the ground, uh, that later on we can put in the foil from the um, ground uh, uh, protecting system into this uh, barrel uh, to harvest all the water coming out of the green cut when watering it. Uh, on the right lower picture, you can see again one person uh, putting the plastic sack over a barrel which has no bottom. And uh, this uh, barrel uh, with the plastic bag uh, will then later put into the ground uh, construction with a second barrel with no um, ground in it so that it's um, squeezed from the two barrels uh, when filling the sack. So the sacks are filled for a purpose we see on the next slide. But let me get into this. Um, this yellow pipe in Germany are used for drainage purposes. In this particular case, we only use it to build up a little wall for the a ground um, soil which we put in place so that we have a little um, wall at the side. You also could do the wall by any kind of um, wood or bricks or any kind of soil, but for the reason that we have to build up these um, compost heap uh, in a certain time frame, we can't spend too much time to build up a little wall from wood or bricks. Um, so we're using these yellow pipes only for the purpose to have uh, a side cover and make sure that the water will uh, be um, harvested from the soil. Yeah, that's right. Um, the water, when watering the first four days, the compost pile will run through the entire wood environment into the um, soil. And since the yellow pipe is around it, the water will not stop over and will uh, harvest it in the barrel in the ground. And uh, in the barrel in the ground, we put in a slurry pump to pump uh, all the water with the bacteria over the uh, pile again. This kind of pump and barrel system is only in place for the first week. After the first week, the entire material sucks up the water, and there is no water dripping out of the uh, compost heap. In this slide, you can see that um, we put the heat exchange pipe on these um, they, uh, steel uh, construction uh, grid um, and fix it with a string and it can easily be handled and uh, sent over the fence system at the first layer of heat exchange for the compost heat. On the picture on the left down, you see that we now cover the heat exchange pipe with a plastic sack. The sacks are all filled with the same material the entire system is filled with. Um, and that makes it easier to recover the compost, um, to recover the heat exchanger within the compost heap when we tear it down. So when you tear it down, you take away the fences from the outside, then all the material around uh, the um, heat exchanger will fall to the ground. And then we take um, some forks and gardening equipment to get the material from the top away. And then very soon we will uh, get contact to the plastic sacks. And uh, since all the material is in the sacks, we can easily take them away and uh, get all the materials away from the uh, heat exchange pipe, which makes it much, much easier to get the net with the pipe out of the pile. On the right lower picture, you can see that I'm handling here something with water. This is 
that I make a pressure test with water off the pipe just to make sure that this entire pipe system in this bottom layer is really free of leakage. And we put in about four layers rather than a continuous coil. The reason that we put in four layers is um, if you have a continuous coil, you will have connectors within the compost heap. And if then you don't have the pressure um, test done properly, um, we also had the situation that uh, these are that compost heap had a leakage inside and the entire system couldn't be used for heat generation. So then we only had a compost humus pile rather than a heating pile because uh, due to the leakage within the system, which we couldn't recover, um, the entire work was only half worth the effort. Uh, since we had this experience in the early um, uh, work years uh, building up the uh, compost heap, uh, we decided that we put it into a separate layer and put the pipe system out of the tank system. So the pipes are connected at the outside to make sure and that we have the total control of the uh, hydraulic system, which you will see here on this slide. Um, this is half built, fully built, and on the right hand, uh, the tall picture shows the piping system, which is connected at the outside, so that we have a really big advantage um, to uh, manipulate uh, the layers so just in case that one layer for whatever purpose has a leakage, we can cut it, this layer out and at least have then uh, two or three layers from the four total layer uh, available for heat exchange. So this is a bit more complicated setup because in this particular case, the owner of this compost heap wanted to have hot water at the outside environment and um, there's a little white spot at the middle of the picture, which is a manometer, gives us the pressure from the methane gas in the tank inside. If you go a little bit left, you will see a gray um, um, a switch, uh, which is a valve. This valve is from the hot water, which comes from the top. And if you go at this gray valve a bit further down, about three feet above the ground or two feet above the ground, you see another gray valve. That is a valve from the cold water. So this guy here has a, a mixer mixing uh, system by two valves, top hot water, bottom um, cold water, to get uh, hot water outside where the compost pile is built up. So he's using this water for car washing, washing the um, garden furniture and uh, his outside environment from the hotel. Uh, that's the reason we put this in place. Here you see the connection from the um, compost pile to the house. Uh, we do it by a heat exchange um, box. This heat exchange box you see on the right hand side is from stainless steel and has the size of a shoebox. So it's about uh, one feet by 15 inch by 15 inch and got 50, five zero, 50 layers of um, steel plate, which separates the um, hydraulic system from the compost heap uh, with a, a hydraulic system from the house system. The reason we put that in place is due to the uh, low cost of the heat exchange pipe. Um, the heat exchange pipe will let oxygen go through. So it's not a full oxygen um, secure pipe system. And the oxygen uh, within the system would uh, build rust uh, within the house system, which we don't want to have there because the entire uh, house um, pipe system is so very expensive to rebuild 
if for any rough uh, leakage uh, purposes um, we have to do that. So it's more easy to look after these stainless steel um, heat exchanger rather than um, jeopardizing the house system itself. If you look at the picture down left, you see the compost heat directly connected to the central heating system of the house without any boiler system in between. Um, so jeopardizing in terms of the water, which due to the low cost pipe system might have some oxygen in it, is on the compost heat side. So um, the uh, black pipe you have seen in the slides earlier is a very um, uh, normal material, which uh, lets uh, some uh, oxygen gases going through. And to avoid any rust within the central heating uh, hydraulic system, which is 100% free of oxygen, uh, we put in the um, the <clears throat> heat exchange system from stainless steel. Yes, you're right. Uh, the oxygen would compromise house pipes. Um, that's why we put the heat exchanger in place. Okay, uh, at the middle picture from this slide, you see um, the boiler system in place. The boiler system uh, is the first station where the heat from the compost heat is going through. And from the boiler system, the heat is then going into the hydraulic heating system from the house. And at the top, you see the um, solar thermal system connected with the heating system of uh, the house anyhow. And the compost heat now is connected to the solar panel system as it would be a second solar panel system. So the uh, regulation and room temperature measurement and everything is uh, covered by the solar system. So that is a very common uh, combination uh, with European houses. A lot of the European houses these days have a hydraulic a solar system in place and also a boiler system, which then takes the biomala, the compost heat, as an additional heat source. <clears throat> Many times we are asked what kind of um, energy we are able to harvest from the biomala. And it's almost um, a tenth from the volume uh, you put into the biomala. So if you have a 40 cubic meters of uh, material, green cuts, uh, manure, and slurry, um, you have about four kilowatts of energy harvesting from the material. But it all differs a bit by the green cuts uh, you have available and you are using, but in general, uh, this tableau and this uh, spreadsheet uh, shows the right term. If you go to the very right um, column, uh, you see the layer of pipes which are built into a certain volume of uh, compost heat. So you can see that the smaller heaps will have two layers of pipes and the bigger systems have about four layers of pipes. And pipe within the layers will vary between 60 meters to 400 meters. Each meter of a one um, saw or a one inch piping system carries about half a liter of water. And this half a liter of water is also a, a potential backup uh, for the hydraulic water system. So if you have 400 meters of pipe within the compost heap, you will have 200 liters of hot water available for your hydraulic system. Um, this is a small introduction of the 
solar uh, thermal system we have in place. This is a vacuum pipe system which is a mirroring system in the back. And this system will harvest 10 months a year extremely hot temperatures from uh, the environment, from the sun. Even in January, this system uh, is able to harvest about 35 degrees Celsius, um, which gives you enough heat uh, for a shower system. And the boiler in place uh, can be heated up by 300-400 liters a day, which is almost the entire consumption of hot water for shower of a five-head family. And pre warmed by compost is also possible that you have it uh, at a much higher degree. Um, if you have the compost heap in place, in addition to the uh, solar heating system or only the compost heap in place, you are also very much able to harvest about 400 to 1,000 liter of hot water for your um, water system. Yes, um, this was more or less the presentation in regards of the BioMiler, the compost heat system. Um, since we had this experience with the microphone system, um, which gave us so much background and noise, I would appreciate if you still would give me some questions by the chat box so that I can answer that. But as a first introduction from my side, I'm through um, the presentation. If you would leave me your email address later on, I would able to provide you with the PowerPoint presentation itself. And since we have uh, recorded this uh, session, um, you could also have a look at this recorded session later on um, to get the one or the other um, reminder of the things I said. Um, and I hope that this entire introduction would make it possible for you to build up your own compost heap um, without any additional help. Uh, you don't have to be afraid to do something wrong because there is nothing you can do wrong. Uh, it's all organic environment. It's all organic waste. It's um, no disadvantage you will run into. Uh, since we have built the BMR in the past 30 years, uh, we almost had no uh, failure um, except that we had uh, not enough water put into it. And uh, there's one um, recommendation I can give you, which is a recommendation that you should have at least 30% of um, dunk and slurry, and you should have not less than 40% of wood chip, green cap. Whatever else you mix together, uh, any green waste from the house, any um, grass from the outside, uh, any old uh, wood chips you have available in around you, any kind of building and construction wood um, sent uh, through a chipping system, old and dead wood, you can all put that together into your compost heap as long as it is set up with um, dunk, manure, slurry. The 30% and the rest 70% could be anything from wood, green cut, and straw, whatever you have available. You can't do anything wrong. So you have to water it. You have to press it together when you set it up. You have um, uh, to fill up the water um, system with the slurry, cow slurry or slurry or pig slurry, so that you have a very nice mixture of uh, slurry and water. And then the entire thing will work very nicely, 12 to 16 months, and will give you enough heat for your greenhouse environment. And um, 
When you have any further questions, feel free to give me a note by mail, or you also can arrange uh, any kind of uh, conference call. Let me go through your question again. Um, okay, the question is, if we have uh, any experience with smaller units, so that you have a number of smaller piles um, to build up over the time. Um, I would say that is an option to do, but uh, since you have to have um, about three feet from the outer um, tent system to the inner pipe system uh, for isolating the coals in the winter time, you're losing a lot of material uh, if you have a number of smaller piles. So it's uh, from the effectiveness of building up and rebuilding it, uh, easier to have bigger piles rather than a number of smaller ones. Um, what you also can do is if you have uh, wood planks available or any kind of isolation material like PE uh, foam or something like this, you can um, isolate uh, or, or do your isolation around the compost heap from the outside. So you put the tent first and then the isolation around it and then you have a bigger um, advantage to harvest the heat from the compost pile. Uh, that makes it quite easy to handle the entire system. Or you have dryish hog manure, that's okay. No worries. Um, you have to mix it together with your wood chips and water the things quite nicely. You can spread it out uh, on the floor, any ground. Um, to get it mixed, the half manure with the wood chips, and uh, then use a big tr um, uh, farm truck uh, with a shovel in the front uh, to put it together. As long as it's nicely mixed and watered and uh, set up, uh, half manure will work as well as any cow or pig manure. But uh, the slurry might be good if you can get somewhere from um, another farmer with cows or with ticks, some cow and uh, tick slurry. If you insulate a smaller piles, that's okay. So if you have at least uh, 20 to 40 cubic meters um, of material available and put an isolation around that, then you get started with a smaller pile. And uh, depending on the weather condition at your side of the world in the moment, you might want to put it up straight away with the material you have available. So you could do that. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, we use the so-called compost tea. I don't know. I think. It's, it's a very international compost tea, right? Um, the compost tea uh, you can get out of the system. Um, you should only use um, after eight to eight weeks to the end of the um, compost tea. So all the material digested by the biochemical process at a later stage uh, within the compost could be uh, watered and uh, then um, put in a fish tank pump for oxygen and uh, make your own compost tea. Uh, that's excellent material. You can't get any better than that uh, to use for your greenery. Uh, absolutely right. Um, whatever you harvest from the compost pile can also be transformed with water and oxygen into um, compost tea after the eight or 16 months of usage. Yeah, uh, eight weeks is okay. Um, the humus building process 
through the entire compost pile is almost done by eight weeks. So whenever you use uh, the material to crunch it into the ground, not deeper than um, 12 centimeters, 15 centimeters, which is about 10 inch, is it right, 10 inch? No, no, uh, five inch. I think five inch is the right deepness um, to put in the material. Um, if you do it after eight weeks, um, then you put it into the ground not more than five inch. That would be the very best uh, opportunity to make most out of the compost and humus you harvested by a pile which is eight weeks old. Okay, if you would um, use fresh water for the coils, that is okay. But if you want to have an entire hydraulic system that you run um, an entire independent water system through um, the, the hoses, that would be okay. Then you only have one pump in the middle. So you have the water running through the plastic PE pipe um, of the compost heap and the same material you can use for the greenhouse in the ground or in the air for heat exchanger in the greenhouse. Then you only have a very normal hydraulic water pump and nothing else in place uh, to heat up your greenhouse. Um, your question is now uh, in regards to the compost tea. Um, no, there's a little misunderstanding. Um, my suggestion and experience is that you put in the um, compost itself. Uh, five inch deep. The compost tea can be applied at any uh, plant uh, on the leaf or on the branches or just to the ground. It will find its way by itself. So the compost tea can be used also as a fertilizer, a fluid fertilizer at, at the same time also uh, um, the protection against, oh my God, my vocabulary is bad. Um, any of the, any of the uh, flies and the little worms and things. Um, whatever, you, you can also use it as a, as a protection, environmental protection. Yeah, so it's the fuller feet on top of the ground for the tea, yeah. So you apply the compost tea as you will find all the instructions in the internet or on YouTube. So this kind of compost tea you harvesting here from the compost pile uh, can be applied as you will see it in the internet. Absolutely right. Yeah, then um, uh, I'm very happy that I could give you this kind of information. And thank you very much for joining me running through the presentation. And uh, I'm also very happy that the methodology of the compost heap is now spreading over the big pond to you guys in America. Uh, you have a good time. And please uh, let me know when you build up a compost pile and on first experiences. If you ever want to make a workshop over there, let me know. If you get enough participants together to pay for my flight, I'm more than happy to give you